Hey, Tammy here with this week's takeaway. Today in my Bible reading this morning, I was reading in the book of Exodus chapter 3 about when Moses sees the burning bush. And I, I just want to read you those first little, that first little bit. And then um, just a question that popped into my mind about it I'd like to talk to you about. So it says, one day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. So I had the same question that Moses did, right? Why wasn't the bush burning up? And we just take it for granted when we read that. Well, it's because it was God in the fire, and so God didn't burn the bush up. But why didn't God burn, burn the bush up? I mean, Moses says later in Deuteronomy that God is a devouring fire, right? So why didn't the bush burn up? And another question I have about that is then when Moses starts to come close, God says to him, actually it says, warns him, don't come any closer. You're on holy ground. Take your shoes off, you're on holy ground and don't come any closer. Why couldn't he come closer? I think it's because Moses would have burned up. <laughs> so here's, here's my thought, all right? Uh, take it or leave it, but this is what I was thinking about. Is the bush didn't burn up not because God isn't a devouring fire, but because as a devouring fire, what God burns up is anything false. Okay, so the bush is a bush. It is its essence, right? It's not trying to be something else. It's not pretending to be a tree or anything like that, right? The bush is a bush. And so the bush doesn't burn up with the flames of the all-powerful, almighty holy god because it is its very essence it's there's no pretense there it's not putting on any airs trying to be something else right but we humans we all have these false um things that we that that we do that we that we um portray or whatever you know we work really hard to try to be good and to do things right and at the same time we're not really completely our truest self and I think that since the fall of man that's just that's part of the problem of sin that's part of what it is when when the fall happened that's one of the things right and even though we are stamped with the image of God still we have this pretense right and it's really hard to to just let all those walls down, to just be who we truly, truly are. So God warns Moses, don't come any closer, right? This fire's hot and you have parts of you that will burn up, right? And and it's true. Moses later in Deuteronomy 4, I think, 424, he says, God is a devouring fire. He is a jealous God. And in that part, he's actually talking about make sure you don't have any idols, right? Nothing else between that you would worship instead of God, right? And so that's something for us to think about, like where are we completely putting our trust in what things are we counting on and, and what other gods might we have that isn't, isn't our true and one God, right? So that's one thing to, to think about. Another part of that I think is, um, Paul mentions, I, I wrote this one down. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, 11, Paul says, When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. So I was thinking about that because I think sometimes um, part of our pretense or that the false self that we sometimes portray is because of a way that we learned as children, um, you know, to, to just to cope with whatever our situations were with, you know, whatever our lives were like, we learned certain tendencies and techniques that we would do to help us to, um, for people to like us, for, you know, us to, um, for us to be praised rather than, um, 
get in trouble, right? Just different things like that. And I'm not saying like we should all be jerks. That's not what this is about. It's just, I'm just saying that, you know, it's something to think about. What are the childish ways that maybe I'm still holding on to some coping things that I have that I don't need to hold on to anymore that I can just let go of? And here we are, right, with the Holy Spirit living inside of us, doing work in us. And I think that the Holy Spirit has that devouring fire of God that he will show you things, point things out to you in your life that you're like, do you still need this? Do you still need to um, to operate in this way? Because we have him. He's our, he's our strength and he's our power. So there's things that we can let go of that we don't have to be people pleasers. We just have to be God pleasers. And so what are things that we can do to please our God, our King? What are things that we can let go of that we don't have to hold on to anymore? Things from our childhood, things that um, we use to cope that we don't need to do that anymore, that we can just lay down, that we can give to God and say, go ahead, God, burn this thing up, you know? Anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking about today. And so maybe this is something that you could use as a springboard that might help you this week that you can just think about some things like that and um, and see what, just talk to God about it and see what you and he come up together that maybe is something that you can let go of and, and just let that get devoured. I hope you have a great week. I look forward to seeing you and talking with you next week.